Hi, welcome to lecture 1A and we're going to be focusing specifically on past examination questions that have looked at explanations of attachment. So what is meant by the term attachment? If you remember from lecture 1, I gave you at least two bits of um, information that you can use for this particular definition. So what is meant by the term is just definition. So you need to make sure it's an emotional bond and it's reciprocal or it's a two-way process and that should be enough to get you the two marks. This question is an application question because it uses people's key it uses people's names and like a particular scenario. So you need to talk about the scenario in your particular uh, particular um, in your answer. So when Max was born, his mother gave up work to stay at home and look after him. Max's father works long hours and does not have much to do with the day-to-day -day care of his son. Max is now nine months old and he seems to have a very close bond with his mother. Use learning theory to explain how Max became attached to his mother rather than to his father. Now, every time they ask you to use learning theory, you need to use um, the keywords such as um, classical conditioning, Max has learned via association, the mother was a neutral stimulus, the food was an unconditioned stimulus, and um, eventually the mother became the conditioned stimulus and the food became... So you basically have to do a formula of classical conditioning and then you have to say an additional one in terms of max has now um via operant um operant conditioning um his mother is the secondary reinforcer where the food will be the primary reinforcer so therefore max seeks out his mother in order to get the primary reinforcer which is the milk if you're not sure about this again go back to lecture one and take a look at me explaining the different types of the way um, people learn to do things. Make sure you include Max and the scenario of his mum and dad um, in the equation as well when you're talking about it. So again, make sure you talk about learning and operant conditioning. Outline Bulby's theory of attachment. Um, again, I told you, um, to maybe you can use the acronym. So I'm secure, ch um, children in crisis. So you can use, obviously, you talk about the innate, you talk about monotropy figure, you talk about the secure base, you talk about the sensitive period, you talk about the um, critical period, you talk about internal working model, and you talk, talk about continuity hypothesis. You cannot get full marks for this answer if you do not um, talk through all of the Bowlby's key terms about the evolutionary theory. So remember those key terms I told you about. Again, make sure you use the acronym to help you. Um, so it's kind of like the same question as before, so whereas this question was a 6 mark, this question will be an 8 mark, but this question is requiring you to do something a bit different. It wants you to display your knowledge and understanding, so 4 marks worth, so maybe you can get away with using 4 of Bowlby's keywords, such as innate, such as secure base, such as monotropy, and such as um, um, sensitive period, that would be fine. But the, however, the other 4 marks, because it's 8 marks, the other 4 marks is for you to evaluate Bowlby's explanation of attachment. So you can, for example, say it's been supported by Schaffer and Emerson, who found that um, even though kids have loads of attachment figures, they had multiple attachment figures, they still had that one primary caregiver that they were attached to. Yes, yeah, so that kind of supports the monotropy um, part of it. Or another way to evaluate it, for example, is you can say that um, it's you can say that um, they did, it doesn't take into account other kind of explanations like the temperament hypothesis that um, babies have different personalities and it's the personalities that help form attachments with people and not the fact that they have to be innate, social releasers, etc. Because sometimes if babies are going to cry, 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 cry and cry, unfortunately some caregivers may not respond to them in, that, in, a, in a way that they should do because they're fed up and they're tired, etc. Okay, so... This one, you can get away with just doing four key points for Bowlby and um, one key point for elaboration. It could be either strength or limitation. It doesn't really matter. And you actually um, elaborate on that point. So whichever one you're going to do, if you're going to use Schaffer and Emerson, you just say what this now suggests. It now suggests that um, should, children can form multiple attachments but still have that primary monotropy figure, which obviously supports Bowlby's theory. Outline and evaluate the learning theory as an attach as an explanation of attachment so again the same thing for four marks you outline a learning theory how we all learn by a classical or operant conditioning so you can afford to kind of like be a bit not as much detail 
but again you still have to talk about how the child associates the mother with food for classical conditioning and for operant how the child is a, a, um, a child is associating the mother with its primary reinforcer which is the milk and then you do at least one evaluation point elaboration on that elab um, evaluation point so you can talk about how there's not very much research support or you can talk about how Harlow's monkeys show that it's not just food that um, people that that babies are looking for because these monkeys actually went to the cloth mother and they didn't really care too much about the food. Right, learning theory provides one explanation of attachment. It suggests that attachment will be between an infant and a person who feeds it. However, the findings of some research studies do not support this explanation. Outline re research type findings that challenge the learning theory of attachment. Okay, so because they ask you for findings, you have to be very, very careful for the plural findings. At least give two different research findings. So you could talk about Harlow's monkeys and you could talk about Schaffer, Schaffer and Emerson. Okay, the Harlow's mon monkeys found that it wasn't all about food, it was about comfort. And Schaffer and Emerson, for example, you can use and say they formed multiple attachments and they were, t and they were most attached with people who interacted with them the most. So you can use those two for four marks. Right, these, I love these tick box questions. So um, tick two of the boxes below to indicate which of the following statements relate to Bowlby's evolutionary theory of attachment. So they're going to try and confuse you, but don't um, give in to it. You just do a process of in uh, elimination. So let's look at it from A. Attachment takes place during a critical period or not at all. To me, that is true. That's definitely um, um, evolu Bowlby's evolutionary theory because he did talk about the sensitive or critical period. B, infants become attached to the person who feeds them. No, that definitely can't be evolutionary because evolutionary did not talk about um, anyone feeding anybody else. Okay, so I know I can definitely rule out B. Um, next one, infants are innately programmed to form an attachment. So I would say yes, that is evolutionary because remember when we said that they um, released some kind of social releases, things like crying, cooing, all that kind of stuff to help them form an attachment with their caregiver. So their caregiver can basically um, look after them and protect them. So I would say C. And finally, attachments are based on the principles of classical and operant conditioning. Obviously, that's not evolutionary. That's learning. So my um, answer here, I'll be ticking A and C. Um, psychologists have put forward different explanations of attachments, such as learning and Bowlby's theory. Outline and evaluate one or more explanations of attachment. Okay, so what I'll do here is I'll outline fully one of the explanations. It could either be learning theory or Bowlby's theory. So I'll really, really do that as in much detail as I can. And then I'll do an additional one. So either so if I've done Bowlby's one fully, I'll do learning theory briefly to show that I do have a bit of knowledge in my head, that I'm not a one-trick um, pony. So once I've done that, then I will start doing my um, um, evaluation. So again, I'll either use two strengths, one limitation, or two limitations, one strength. Okay, so I think three um, elaborated evaluation points are more than enough for 12 mark. I'm also going to write up this question on lecture eight. So please do look out for lecture eight when I've actually written out this um, answer. And you can see exactly how I've gone about writing it. And that is the end of lecture 1A. Again, do look back. Um, in case there's anything you're not too sure about and do post any comments again if there's anything that you don't understand and I'll get back to you.